right, so about a week ago now or so, I asked you guys to give me some questions that I could answer in a video, and uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do in this video. And I'm gonna pick the top three favorite ones that I want to answer and that most people wanted me to answer as well. And uh, I'm gonna try to answer them. And the first one is, how did I learn Python so fast? So let's start with that one. So we got one. Um, I don't think it's big enough for me to actually take it up, but this was like this, which is, which is really cool. But I'm gonna let him back in because uh, I don't think he's big enough. But I've never caught a fish that fast, so uh, that's pretty crazy. All right, so let's get started with some of these questions. Usually I script my videos, so I write out what I'm gonna say, and that's because I tend to kind of go off on tangents that aren't super relevant. Uh, so in order to kind of avoid that, I tend to script my videos to make them make more sense. But I wanted to try to not do that in this video just to make it a little bit easier for myself. All right, so let's get started with the first question, which is please tell us your journey of learning Python how you learned Python. His name is Rishu Mishra, I think. Not sure how to pronounce your name, but I think that the perception is that I know Python because I've been able to code different things in Python. But the truth is that I don't actually know Python that well. The reason that I'm able to do these videos where I do these automations and all these different things that I've done in Python is just from basically understanding the basic concepts of programming, so object-oriented programming, if you learn the basics of that, it doesn't really matter what language you've learned that in, you'll be able to apply that to any language and you'll be able to do pretty much anything that you want in any language that you want to. There's gonna be specific things that's, that you'll need to learn for the different languages, but for the kind of stuff that I've done, I haven't really run into anything that's limited me because I've learned uh, object-oriented programming first in Java. So that's kind of how I did it. I learned object-oriented programming from this book that I've mentioned a million times probably on this channel uh, that's called Java Head First. And uh, in that book, I learned object-oriented programming and how that works and just how programming works in general. And I would really recommend it again if you haven't learned any of this, then I would recommend like going to that book and checking that out. It is in Java, so the first language that I learned was Java. And then I've basically everything that I've done since that has been based on the knowledge that I got from that book. Some stuff I've learned since then, of course, but most of what I do from a day-to-day -day basis is gonna be based on that book pretty much. So that's what I would suggest doing is not focusing on the language that you're gonna learn, but just learn object-oriented programming in whatever language you find that you want to learn it in. And then once you've learned that, you're gonna be able to apply those concepts to anything that you do with any language that you use. So that's kind of how I, I went about it. So I wouldn't say that I know Python at all, I just know object-oriented programming and Python is an object-oriented language so I can use Python. Same with any other language like Dart or Java or yeah, any of those languages. I don't actually know them at all. I just basically know object-oriented programming. I know Java the best I would say and then I can just apply those concepts to any language that I use. Once you know that, you can apply it to any language that you use. So that's what I would suggest, learning object-oriented programming first and then going into whatever language that you want to learn it in. And the, the Java Head First book, that was actually the book that was suggested by my university for the first programming course that we had in my software engineering program. 
So that is a really good book and that's the book that they suggested to use. So I really cannot recommend that book enough. It's really good and it teaches everything really well and really like the explanations are really well thought through and like they break it down in a really good way to make you understand it really well, at least for me. And if you want specific tips for like how to learn Python, I would suggest just Googling Python tutorial. And then I think one of those search results will be uh, I think it's like docs.python.org and it's a tutorial, Python tutorial by Python. It's like the official Python website. I looked through that and it seems like it's a really long tutorial with lots of different chapters and things. And if you go through that, then you're definitely gonna know how to program in Python. So that would be my suggestion if you wanna go into specifically Python. But I'm saying that with the disclaimer that I haven't actually done that myself, so I don't know what that tutorial is gonna be like, but I would suggest that, I would think that that's probably the best way to do it. So that's my suggestions for how to learn Python and how I learn Python. All right, so it's pretty windy, but let's go. Alright, so I don't know if you can hear this, but what we're going to try to catch is sea trout, I think, or Atlantic salmon. Not sure what it's called in English. In Swedish it's called Öring. This is what I've been doing for the past, like, two months, I think. Uh, basically, every time I have the chance, I go out here and I try to catch some sea trout. So we'll see if we can catch some today. Hopefully, we can. It's pretty damn windy, so... I don't know if I've fished in these sort of conditions before, so I think it's like 13 meters per second or something uh, in the, the wind. And the gusts, I think, I don't know what how fast they are, but pretty spicy. Anyway, let's try it. And the next question that I wanted to answer is from Abhishek Gautam, maybe? Not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, he asks, uh, among the things that you do, which one provides you with a stable income source? And uh, to be honest, right now, it's just YouTube. That's all that I do that provides me an income right now. Uh, I've done some freelancing in the past, but right now I'm just doing YouTube because that's what I find most fun. It's really the perfect opportunity for me because I'm the kind of person that likes to dive into certain things and then I kind of tire of that thing and then I want to move on to something else. So for instance, like last week's video where I did game development, where I built a game, that's kind of perfect in YouTube because I can just find something that I'm interested in that I feel like doing at the moment and then I can dive headfirst into that and do that all in for like a month or so and then make a couple videos on that topic and then if I don't feel like doing that anymore then I can just switch to something else or if something else comes up that I'm get getting more interested in then I can switch over to that thing and I can do that all in. Uh, so that's kind of what I really like about doing YouTube and that's why I've also tried to avoid freelancing and like i said i've done freelancing in the past but it's not something that i feel like doing right now because it kind of becomes that you work for someone else and i don't feel like doing that and i don't have to do that right now because of the fact that i'm really lucky with youtube and all of you guys that are following me uh, that means that i'm actually getting a pretty decent income from youtube and that's gonna be like, that's pretty much my dream just to be able to do these things that I do where I can dive into an automation that I wanna do or I can start building an app or a game or whatever I wanna do really. And then I can make videos on that and hopefully you guys like some of the videos that I make. It seems like you do. And that's kind of my dream right now is just to be able to continue to do this and be able to dive into things that I find interesting at the moment and program different things. Yeah, right now it's YouTube, that's my stable income source. All right, so you can't really see me right now, but it is 5.40 a.m. right now. And uh, we're gonna go down to the water and see if we can catch some fish. It's a lot less windy today, so hopefully there'll be some activity on the surface or we'll see something like chasing the lure. But yeah, let's go.
All right, so no fish this morning, but I saw one fish that was pretty large that was like chasing the lure. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty dead. Uh, it's been a really nice morning though because the sun's been sort of out and it hasn't been too windy either, so that's been pretty good. But now I'm just gonna go up and have some breakfast and then rest for a bit, watch the office and then go back down for some like lunchtime, I I'm thinking, lunchtime fishing. It's been a nice morning even if I didn't catch any fish. All right, so the next question that I wanted to answer is actually two, two pretty similar questions. One is from David, uh, which is, what about software development has surprised you the most? And then the other one is pretty much the same thing. Which aspect of IT programming do you like the most? And this one was asked by Kai Klen Gaming. And uh, the reason that they're both the same is that the thing that surprised me about programming is also the reason why or the aspect of programming that I really like and that is how creative it is because when I started it I kind of thought that it was just kind of brain dead you just sit in front of the computer and you write ones and zeros uh, that's kind of what I thought and then you make the computer do stuff it seemed like something that I wasn't really interested in and I've also always been really interested in creative things like painting, drawing, uh, making videos. I've been making videos since I was like a child. And uh, that's that's one of the things that I, I got really surprised about with programming is how creative it actually is. Once I've started getting into it, I started realizing like how similar. I've made the connection before between programming and building with Legos in that I think that it is really similar in the way that you kind of come up with this idea for something that you want to build and then you have to put all the pieces together and you have to figure out where to put every piece in order to make it into this structure that you want it to be become in a sense uh, and when i was a kid i loved to play with legos so that similarity between do those two things is i think what i really like about programming you can come up with this idea for something that you want to build like I've done on this channel several times, like an app I want to build or something that I want to automate. And then you can just try to figure out how to code that in a way that makes that happen, if that makes sense. And there's so many different aspects of it that goes into it. Like if you want to build an app, for instance, you have to design the actual app, which I really like too. I like to, because that kind of becomes a little bit of like drawing, that sort of thing. You design the, the UI for the app and uh, then the actual coding itself i just really like because there's so usually so many different ways to actually solve the problems that you run into with code so there's going to be like almost an infinite amount of ways to solve the different problems that you run into most of them are going to be super bad and some of them are going to be really good and the the creative aspect of it is trying to create a solution that's really like efficient and where you write the least amount of code possible and you still get the job done. So that's something that I kind of, I think a lot of people are probably surprised by if someone would say that coding is really creative. And uh, yeah, so that's one of, the, that's the thing that I like the most about programming and that's also what surprised me the most about programming. Right, so let's do a last question and this is the one that I think got the most likes on this post. Once you've learned some programming how do you start selling your skills as a student slash part-time worker or how slash what was your journey up to where you are now? Um, so this question the reason why I didn't want to bring this up as like a main question is that I think I, I did a video like a while back that's called how to make money with code and in that video I pretty much explain my best tips for how to do what you're asking I think but shortly I'll give you some quick tips for how to do this and I think that the easiest way to do it or to get started with it is just going to be through like freelance websites so there's things like Upwork there's things like Fiverr 
Um, those are usually a good way to kind of get started to get a feel for how it is to work for someone else and work with the different uh, restrictions or requirements that a customer would come up with. I've signed up to some of those like freelancer.com and upwork.com but I haven't actually gotten any jobs or applied for any jobs there. I may have, I may have applied for some jobs, I don't know. Uh, but I haven't gotten any jobs anyway. So the feeling that I get is that people go to those sites that don't know how to code and they look for people that can code and do it really cheaply. So they think that they can get like a Facebook app built for $500 or 50 bucks or something like that. And uh, that's not really possible. So the price, it seems to be pretty low in my opinion. And that's kind of why I haven't really used it that much. But it can be a good way for like a student, someone that's quite young or something like that, or just getting started to start with something like that, to get some money, some income from that. And also to kind of get started with, like I said, learning how to take the instructions from a customer and like making that into a product. Because usually that was like one of the big things in my software engineering course in university is like, how do you take someone's requirements or what a customer asks of you and make it into what they actually want? Because usually what they're asking for and what they want are sometimes like quite different. So, um, kind of parsing what they're asking for and making that into what they actually want is a pretty difficult thing and that's something that you kind of have to practice. So uh, I think that that's how I would uh, start out if I, if I was a beginner or like just learning programming. All right, so uh, that's it for this one. I hope that you, I gave some valuable information in some way or at least that you understand a little bit more of how uh, my situation, what my situation looks like or what my skill level is. I hope you also enjoyed watching some of the footage from me from this uh, co last couple of days of fishing. As of filming this right now, I only know that I got one fish, so uh, it will be interesting to see kind of how many I get. But yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>